I'm Gary Cohen, and I'm a results leader. You're listening to ResultsLeader.fm. Being a thought leader is easy. Getting results is hard. This show is for the results leader who lives and dies by their results. Here is your host and chief results leader, Jonathan Rivera. Yes, yes, y'all. It's time once again for another ResultsLeader.fm. Welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. And what's about to happen is we are going to blow your mind with some more results leadership from Mr. Gary Cohen, executive CEO coach, elevating others in leadership. He's going to share stories of ups, of downs, and of triumph. Let's jump in. Gary, welcome to the show. Good to be speaking with you. Are you ready to rock this thing? I am, Jonathan. Thanks for having me as a guest. Yes, sir. Let's give our listeners a quick win. What book have you given most as a gift? Well, come on. That's easy one. Given that I'm the author of Just Ask Leadership, Why Great Managers Always Ask the Right Questions, I must mail out mm, hundreds of them a year as gifts. Let's talk about failure. Tell me a story of how an apparent failure set you up for later success. Well, it, it's success, failure, and the success again. So I started a company with a business partner. We grew it to 2,200 people. We were the 23rd largest call center in the U.S., the 11th largest in Canada. We hit some rocky roads, especially in about year 15, 16. We had do not call legislation. We had the 9-11 when people didn't want to receive calls at home. It was a real struggle. And I went through depression and eventually left the business. What I wound up doing is going into coaching. It has been just tremendous for me and for my clients. And I couldn't have done it without that road without that journey to building that business and all the lessons learned, um, both the positive and the negative ones, trying to help my clients not find themselves in similar positions. Now, as entrepreneurs, I think we can say whatever we want, but we are emotionally attached to our businesses, whether we like it or not. And you, you mentioned depression. So I'm curious how you worked your way out of that so that you could start building again. Um, first, it was recognizing I had it. I went through different help, through different people to help, therapists. Also, I went to a program called Onsite Workshops, Tennessee, which is an amazing place. It's, it's a year of therapy in a week. In addition to that, I am comfortable with drugs available today for depression. And I know some people are not comfortable with that. And for me, it was a real help to save off the deep downs that depression will put you through. Let's talk about investments. What would you say is the most worthwhile investment that you have ever made? Well, that's a tough one. Okay. So it, I was thinking about that question and two come to mind. So one was a predictive dialing system, which was the first automated system in the call center industry. And we were one of the first to buy it. It put us legs ahead when we didn't have the experience. So the technology was a huge win for us over our competition who clearly knew the industry way better than we did. However, number two, and it may be number one, is we hired a coach in our first year. That coach had been former president Dun & Bradstreet. He had generated more revenue for that company. I'm sorry, more earnings for that company than they did in the past 125 years. And so we hired him as our coach. In the first two years, he actually made more than we did as the entrepreneurs of the business. And we worked with him for about seven years and he was invaluable to our growth and learning business and how to do it and avoiding a lot of mistakes. Man, there's two things I want to talk about there. Let's start with the uh, latter one. How did it feel having the coach making more money than you, the owner of the business? How, how did that play into your feelings? It was mixed. I mean, it was a lot of years ago, but I'm trying to reflect on that. And it was a mixed feeling. I know that it was the reason I remember it is I remember my business partner and I talking about it, you know, in retrospect, it was like, wow, would we have even made it as far as we did without him? 
I think in retrospect, you, you asked investments. Investments aren't always a quick return. And that was something. I also think that, you know, there's, I've had several clients that are sub a million dollars that I've worked with. At a certain point, I say, you know, I'm really expensive. And when I look at your expenses and you really should go forward without me. And they're like, no, 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 we won't. And I think it's not the same. They're still making more than they're paying me. However, I think it's, they're telling me something that I need to remember, which was my early beginnings and how much I needed that support and help that probably at the moment it was probably foggy. You know, you kind of think more of yourself than you should and all of that. So how'd you go out? How'd you find that coach? Do you remember? Because you said it was a while ago. I absolutely do. We're doing work for Dun & Bradstreet. Our contact there said that the son of the former president had moved to Minneapolis. And so he said, you should get to know Greg really well and see if he'd introduce you to his dad. That's exactly what happened. And for that purpose, which was to see if he would consult or coach. And John Kunz took on the gig because he wanted to see his son. We paid him. He we took care of his travel, right? And he got to see his son regularly. It, it became a very deep, um, meaningful relationship for us. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? I got stuck, if you'll call it stuck, in Steamboat, Colorado during the beginning of COVID with my daughter. We were both out here on ski vacations. We, we have had a condo here for years. Being locked down, what a place to be locked down. And it turns out that my long awaited dream of being of living in Steamboat, Colorado uh, turned true because my other daughter, my youngest one, came into town and said, Dad, this condo is just too small for the family. And she found us a house and we bought a house. And now I've been here about 90 percent of the time. So this goes to the habit. The habit is to go out, ski, snowshoe, hike with the puppies and It has made all the difference. In fact, I was back in Minneapolis for 10 days last week. All my friends and clients said they have never seen me happier as all the photos they see on Instagram of me out in the outdoors doing my thing. And and the reason why it's been so helpful is I find it meditative, soul enriching, given how much time I'm working. So I still working full time as a coach. And it really gives me a break in a meaningful way so that I can be present with the clients. Let me tell you something. I'm going to play this for my wife because I want to play some park city and I'm just going to tell her to listen to that. You want me happy? You want me happy? (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And park city is a great place. I have friends who have homes there and they love it. Yeah. What are some bad recommendations you hear in your area of expertise? I hate to call out one as blatantly as this, but I've written about it is EOS. Oh, really? And I'm not a fan because my take on it, I love the book. Gino sent it to me when it first came out and I loved the book. And I said, I love the book. It's different than saying you're going to implement this system, you could be a jewelry store, a manufacturer, a wood carpentry, a hundred million dollar division of a fortune 500 company. And to believe that the same operating system would work for all of these kind of crazy in my book, which is each business creates its strategic value. So strategic value in my mind is The organization has found a way to create value for its customer so significantly that they can extract greater margin from that customer. And if I do things the exact same way as anybody else can do, my competitors, there's no strategic advantage to it. I have seen it operate and I've seen how it takes noise out of the system. That I'll give you. But how does it create actual value for the customer? I'm not sold. I always say we come in when the traction gets flat, meaning the tires pop. And it usually does because I think the genius has been 
he's taken some really great ideas. Like Yitzhak Adiz came up with the whole corporate life cycle. That's where the integrator came from. The problem is they only talk about the integrator. They don't talk about the entrepreneur, the integrator, the producer, and the administrator. Yitzhak Adiz talks about there's a big I and a little I, a big E, a little E, and so on and so forth. And it depends upon where you are in the corporate life cycle, which of those you use. With a one size fits all, big I, they're basically saying every business needs a big I integrator. And it's not true. It depends upon where they are in the growth cycle of the business. So I, I think that companies that get that prescribed find that when a discontinuity happens like COVID, everything blows up. If everybody has become so regimented in their processes, it really lacks the adaptability to what's going on in the external environment. Now we're about to get into your favorite part of the show where we talk about results But first, I've got to ask you, are you picking up what we're laying down here? I hope so. That's why we do the show every week. And I want to ask you for a little bit of help. If there's someone out there that you think can benefit from this show, why not share it with them? Put it out there. Hit the share button. Use hashtag results leader FM and get it out there. Now let's jump back into the interview. Let's talk about results. Why do results matter? That's a broad question on purpose, I guess. I think results are a means of getting to your meaning. I wouldn't start with results. I would start with meaning making and purpose. If you're crafting a vision, either for yourself personally or for your business, What happens is that if it's a good vision, it's likely measurable. Like, you know, when you arrived, I love Jim Collins's view, you know, the Everest test, you know, when you got to the top, right? It's very tangible. I took a picture. I could take a barometer reading. I could use an altimeter, but I know when I reach the top, the sky's up, the earth's all below me. And that is to me what somebody's aiming for, whatever that Everest is for them. Then the results are those things that move you there. And so why do results matter? Because you gave yourself a vision that for whatever reason is meaningful for you. And then the results get you there. In the last five years, what new realization has helped you get better results for your clients? I have to give this one to Jennifer Garvey Berger. I trained with her. She's a Harvard PhD. She worked for uh, Robert Keegan and uh, Lisa Leahy. And she taught me much more than I knew about adult development and how as we move through adult development, We move from simplicity to complexity. And in order to be aware of the levels of complexity and manage it and handle it mentally, one needs to move from subject to object so that when I'm dealing with something, when a client's dealing with something, often they're subject to it. So like if Jonathan, if you feel triggered by something, right, it's kind of gotcha. And it has you instead of you having it. And the idea is in moving from subject, it's got you to object, you've got it, is a stage in development for people. And most people, like 58% of the adult population is still in socialized mind. They want to perform and do things in the world because of how others see them versus how they want to be their self-authorized voice, knowing and creating meaning for themselves. Not my coach told me to do this when I was 11 years old, I'm still doing it. And then you say, how come? I don't know why I just do. Right. Or the person who gets married and is unhappy in the marriage. And they say, when you ask them why, well, when I thought about marriage, this is what I thought about. And I said, how'd you learn that? My parents, church, neighbors, best friends, parents. And I said, how about you talk with your spouse and say what you want together as a marriage 
and have it be your own marriage, not somebody else's version of a marriage, right? So this is about going from subject. I'm subject to all these rules and the ways the world wants me to behave to object, which is I get to decide. I just want that to sit there for a second for the people listening. Like that, that was, that was powerful. Let's talk about your business. What area of your business would you like better results? That's easy. I am looking for another entrepreneur turn coach. It's hard to find uh, because the nature of entrepreneurs is they want to figure it out themselves, which I certainly did by creating a coaching business. And I have some amazing coaches and they are really great. And none of them, they're all micro entrepreneurs because they're, you know, they have their own businesses. I really would love to find another person who's brought the business to scale and now wants to coach other people because I am inundated, flooded with opportunities. And most of them are entrepreneurs wanting an entrepreneur coach. And there aren't many of us out there. And so that would probably be the number one thing that would bring the scale of the business to the next level. I mean, we still grow 30% a year, but it would be quantum. Man, let's hope that person is listening so they connect with you. Let's talk about results one last time. What results are you most proud of? In life, it probably sounds cliche. Our daughters, my wife and I with our daughters, um, we have such an amazing relationship. Now they're adults. Uh, One's married. The youngest one's married, living in Switzerland. The oldest is uh, in Steamboat, living here. She also found her love. She was living in New York before. Just the way they show up in the world and are part of the world, very proud of that. It kind of, everything else kind of pales. I dig it, man. So any parting thoughts you'd like to share with the results leaders who are listening to us right now? Go for it. I was listening to, who's that climber? Um, The solo climber guy? forgetting his name. I I watched a short episode on him today and it was so interesting how he knows when he's climbing, it could be his last climb ever and how that doesn't stop him. He pursues it and he knows the risks because there's a risk for people after results, right? That he goes for it. And it was so interesting how he, he said, even the muscle in his hand or his foot and how it grabs the rock, he has to know that that finger hold will hold and he will hold it or he will perish. And I was, I was thinking about that as it relates to this notion of getting results. And so often, you know, I think the entrepreneur has that edgy, like they're very conscious of risk. You know, I don't find entrepreneurs over risk taking, like I don't see them as free solo climbers. However, there's something about that free solo climbing that I think is totally inspiring for the entrepreneur about the idea that you trust yourself and you're going to go for it. I dig it, man. I know our listeners dig it. Where can they get more from you? They can uh, log on to co2partners.com or uh, gcohen at co2partners.com. Excellent. We will absolutely have links in the show notes. We've been speaking with Mr. Gary Cohen. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. Thank you for tuning in. And that is a wrap. That is a wrap for another edition of ResultsLeader.fm. If you are out there getting results for your clients and you want to be featured on the show, go to ResultsLeader.fm now and apply to be on the show and if you love what you're hearing share the show give us a rating and review do anything to help us get the message out there thought leadership is easy but results leadership is hard we'll catch you on the next one this program is brought to you by the podcast factory.com